Uh, congrats, Zach, uh, on the new deal. Uh, I guess first place to start is your reaction to it and what does it mean to you that the organization is showing you long-term commitment? Well, I'm very appreciative, of course, and um, this isn't really about me. This is uh, about all the people in this building who are working towards a really solid future for all of us. And, and so I'm excited for everybody, you know, because I, I certainly feel like the future is bright. There's a lot to build on. Um, but, but there's a lot of people, I, I think, that, that were a big part of this season, you know, and, and some people get the praise and some won't because they're behind the scenes. But um, there's just a lot of people that, that I personally want to thank, you know, and it starts with the players and the coaches uh, for everything they did this year, all, all the, the hard work that went into this. A lot of tremendous moments that we'll have a chance to reflect back on and be appreciative of. Um, certainly the ownership for being patient with us and giving us this opportunity. Um, but there's so many other people involved as well, you know, with starting with Emily, PJ and Pete, you know, they do such a great job and all the guys in the equipment room with with Adam Nolman, Sam Staley and Tyler Ronk and um, Paul Sperling and his staff with Dan, Nick, Roberto, Mike, um, all the all the people that work with them. Um, and then you look at our strength staff, Joey, Todd and Garrett do a tremendous job. You know, they're one of the best crews in all the NFL um, you know, Eric Ball does such a great job with our players, with the player relations and engagement. Sam Francis with our IT does a tremendous job. Um, you know, Ellen, you know, our receptionist on A1 is awesome and everybody in ticketing and sales and um, the business side of things that keep this thing going behind the scenes and have done just such a great job uh, managing all that that's come with this season. Uh, Jeff Brickner with operations, Mark Heron with security, Duke Tobin and his staff who, who just work their tails off and have done such a great job positioning us for, for the president in the future. Um, you know, and, and Jake Kaiser and all the IT staff that comes with that. And, um, you know, I, I'm sure that there's a lot of people behind the scenes as well. Alex Simons, uh, all the stuff she does with the community engagement, um, TJ with the field, you know, so there's so many people that have made a part of this season successful that, you know, you, you talk about the head coach and the players and the coaches, but there's so many other people uh, that have gone into such a tremendous season and, um, you know, it's, it's such a special thing to be a part of, a special place to be a part of. And, and uh, you know, I'm just, just happy that we all get a chance to experience it and build off of it for the future. Thanks, Zach. Fox Miller. Coach, congratulations. Thank you. Um, talk about uh, the return home, number one, about just how the fans were there to greet you. Did you expect that meaning that raucous of response and, and what it felt like for you? Well, it's a special thing to be a part of when you when you come back and you just see that outpouring of support that we've experienced really all season and and even beyond that, you know, even even the last couple of years, uh, there's been so many people that have their backs. And so it was a fun moment to come back and see that that even in defeat, everyone was still there at the gates cheering us on and excited for all that we accomplished this year. And, uh, you know, it's 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 fun to experience that excitement around the stadium, around the city. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it, there's a lot of hard work that went into it. There, there's been a lot of, of just support from the fans that um, it's awesome to be able to reward that for everyone to experience that. And, and I thought that the scene in LA was tremendous. You know, we had so many people that were there um, that you could see around the stadium and around the hotels and at the game. And, uh, you know, Cincinnati is certainly a, an awesome place to be. Thank you. Charlie Goldsmith. Congrats, Zach. Um, what does this mean for the rest of your staff? And uh, with the exception of Al, do you expect a lot of consistency in that area coming into next year? Yeah, you know, I, I think it's still the early part of that. And, and um, but, but we're really excited about the staff that we have. I, I think um, I've known this for, for three years, two years, one year with some of the people we've added that uh, we've really got a really tremendous group of coaches that um, expect the most out of the players. They get it. The players respect them. And it's been a fun group to be around and, and just really happy. Um, to continue to move forward with this group. Paul Daner. Hey, Zach, uh, congrats. Um, how, how does make, making it to the Super Bowl is great, but now when you look at the offseason, how does it pinch and change the way your process works now, free agency, the draft, it's so much tighter, whereas before you would have already had a month worth of working on this. How, how does that change, you know, your guys, in, not input necessarily, but how that all is going to operate maybe this year? Well, certainly Duke and his staff have kept things moving, you know, behind the scenes. Uh, they've gone to all those all-star games. They've already had a lot of meetings. Uh, some that I would have been a part of last year, um, 
really just taking notes because really you're just get, you're just hearing the information that the scouts have. And so that doesn't change anything. There will be some catch up work we'll have to do as coaches, obviously, but but Duke and those guys have not missed a beat. Um, the combines, the first thing coming up, I think the beauty of how things now are with the combine is now that we have access to these zooms, um, it really changes the way that the coaches can get information from the players from an X's and O's standpoint. So there's not the pressure of, man, you only get the combine and then you're going to go get maybe one visit from the player and go see the player once. You can have all these Zoom meetings where you can gather all that information over the next 60 days um, that used to, you felt the pressure to get that done at the combine. So um, that, that allows us to, to really gear up and, and try to play catch up a little bit with the combine guys, but also just get geared up for free agency hours and, and others um, to make sure that we're making great decisions that we're all on the same page of there. But Paul, we will take vacation uh, here in this next next two weeks. So I think uh, everybody's deserved that. Steve Lapham. Congratulations, Coach. Well earned, well deserved that contract extension. <clears throat> um, sounds like fortunately, <clears throat> no surgeries scheduled for you know Joe, CJ, anybody uh, like that. Can you update everybody on uh, on the injuries and and what the status is and. Um, did you come out of the Super Bowl fairly healthy? Yeah, you know, Joe had the sprained MCL, and and that's really a re-aggravation of, of something, you know, he, he did back in December. Um, but he's a tough guy. He played through it. Rest is going to be the best thing for him. So so that part's encouraging. Um, so, again, he, he's going to get some much-needed rest here these next couple of weeks and um, expect him to come back fully healthy. Uh, CJ will get another MRI today, but, but everything so far has been encouraging. You know, that's typically a – uh, 48 week injury that he came back and played in two weeks. And so that just speaks to his toughness, his character, um, his willingness to do everything it takes to, to help get the job done for our team. So, you know, hopefully just with some rest, he'll be, he'll be back to normal as well. Um, other than that, really nothing major to report. There's always the cleanup things that'll happen with some players. Uh, but for the most part, everybody's on pace to, to be back for next season. And baby. Exactly. I was going to ask you about um, um, first off, does Joe need surgery on his pinky? I know that's something we talked about. Uh, do you know if that's going to need to be healed? Not to my understanding, no. Okay. And, and secondly, there's been, been a lot of conversation about the offensive line in the wake of the game. I mean, as you move forward throughout the offseason, how much of a priority will it be to you maybe use kind of some of that draft capital that you have and also the amount of money that you have in cap space and, and maybe improving that line immediately? I think the, we'll just look to improve the team in any way that we can, you know, and not specific to one necessary group. Um, you know, the, the offensive line helped us get to the Super Bowl, you know, and they gave us opportunities to go win the Super Bowl. And, and everything always falls on them statistically, but that's not always the case. You know, there's play calls that could be better um, to help put them in a better position. And, and so there's a lot that plays into all that. And, and again, they, they were – they were an offensive line that helped us get to the Super Bowl and gave us opportunities to win, and and I think they should be commended for that. The, to be the, that that being said, though, Burrow was still sacked seventy times, you know, in the regular season and postseason combined. If if the offensive line you feel like was you know good enough and ample enough to get y'all there, you know, what what do you attribute those seventy sacks to? The majority of them, then we just got to be better as a unit. Richard Skinner, congratulations, Zach. Wondering how many times you've uh, you've watched the Super Bowl since Sunday, and and if you were looking back, do you have any regrets of any situational stuff that went on? I've I've watched it once uh, on each side of the ball. Um, I'm sure we'll watch it more, you know, as we move forward. Uh, I, I think anytime you lose a game, there's always things you reflect back and and immediately think of what what could I have done different way, what plays, what situations could we put our team in to do it differently. Um, I probably would have said the same thing had, had Tennessee gone down and won the game on their last possession or Kansas City had won the game in overtime. And, and unfortunately, this one didn't go our way. Um, so, of course, th those areas are amplified. And, uh, you know, I, I'm probably one of, of everybody on our staff and on our team that thinks, man, if I could have just done one thing differently, maybe we would have won. And that, that's the part that you just you have to come to terms with and be able to move on from at some point. Um, it also fuels us, you know, I. <laughs> I've had a day off now and, and you want to get back to work because I want to go back to the Super Bowl um, to, to finish it the right way. And I think, I think that's what's uh, unique about our team is um, there's a lot of people that walk away from that game that, that certainly played well enough to win, but nobody feels that way. Everyone feels like, man, if I just would have done this differently, we would have won. 
And, and instead of saying, well, I, I played well enough, you know, if everybody else had done their job, we, we would have won. That's not the sense I got from anybody. And, and that's what we need, you know, to continue to move forward and continue to build on this season. Gary Miller. Zach, congrats, uh, well-earned and deserved. Um, what did you hear from Sean after the game or any of the Rams that you knew so well from the time you spent there or any messages you've gotten from the football fraternity or friends of yours that have meant the most to you and uh, what, what did they mean to you? Yeah, everybody's been supportive and complimentary. And, you know, I, I talked to Sean briefly post game and then we visited again yesterday. Um, but again, there's just, uh, I think, a lot of respect for, from both teams towards one another. I think it was two really good teams. They got the chance to play in the Super Bowl and then it could have sorted out any other way. You know, they, they just made the plays they needed to make to win the game. And so hats off to them for doing that. Um, you know, I know there's, there's a group of men over there and, and it's a really good group of people. Um, I wanted to be the one celebrating with our team. I, there's, don't misinterpret that at all. Uh, but at the same time, you got to find a way to be, be happy for some of those people that you know. And uh, we got to fight back to, to be the one celebrating, you know, in years to come. Kelsey Conway. Hey, Zach. Um, I just wanted to go back to what you were talking about earlier about getting this contract extension. What have you learned most about yourself as a coach in these three years? And with all the young players that you have, um, how do you feel about the future that you have here with this team in the next couple of years? I feel really good. Um, I, I think, first of all, though, 2021 is 2021. And if you immediately think, OK, well, because we were good then, we're going to be good next year. Um, we, we have to match the intensity that we had this season um, in the offseason and training camp and, and continue to build off of this. And um, because 2022 is going to be a new team, you know, whether whether most of the team is back or not, doesn't really matter. Uh, we, we've got to have that intensity to attack the season and put ourselves back in this position because it's hard to get to where we were. Um, and what was the first part of your question, Kelsey? I'm sorry. I, I answered the second part. Not You're in mute right now. Go ahead, Kelsey. <laughs> no, you let me unmute myself. Thanks, Pete. <laughs> uh, what have you learned most about yourself as a coach in these last three years of being head coach of the Bengals? I think you just have to continue to learn from your experiences and um, let the people around you continue to do their job because we have really good people um, that are more than capable of, of, of doing some top-notch things. And I, I think over the three years, that, that's one thing I've learned is, is um, just day by day, let people continue to do their jobs and continue to empower them. And, and so, again, things that I always thought were big issues in year one became less of issues in year two and become less of issues in year three. And it's so about how you approach things and let the people around you really help. And um, we just have such a tremendous support system um, you know, for me personally, Doug Rosfeld does so much for me um, and, and all these coaches, you know, starting with the coordinators, filtering down to the assistants and the assistant position coaches and um, all the support staff we have in the building. So uh, just really, really fun group to be around and and really just thankful for them and all the support that they give this team and they give me. And uh, it's allowed us to do all the things that we've done. Charlie Goldsmith. One play doesn't decide the Super Bowl, but Samaje P. Ryan, third and one. Uh, I'm curious, can you describe the rotation and why Samaje was the one in the game at that moment? Yeah, you know, we were in two minute mode and, and Samaje has done a great job. You know, his role has really been as a protecting back and a lot of the things that come with that, off of that. And, uh, you know, it was, it, it's one of those situations where, where I called the play, um, you know, a little later on the clock. And, and so, you know, I was the one that said, leave him in there. You know, Justin, Justin asked if we wanted to make a change. Justin Hill, our running back coach. And, and I said, you know, just leave Samaje in there. And, and uh, uh, obviously it didn't work out for us, whether if Joe was in there or not. He's, he's certainly deserving of the opportunity and a key moment and a key game to try to get it for us as our feature back. Um, but again, that's just one of the decisions you make in the moment and, and you got to move forward with it. Um, there's other things I certainly could have done over the course of the game that would have put us in a better position and, and unfortunately didn't get it done. Gary Miller. Zach, with a guy that works like you do, what does vacation look like for you and what are you most looking forward to outside of football? Well, I, I think taking my wife to a beach somewhere next week will, will be the first priority. Um, and then vacation for me really is just hanging out at home with the kids, getting to go to basketball practice, getting to uh, you know, uh, be home, you know, at a good hour and, 
and uh, that that to me is is enough vacation. Mike Petraglia. Uh Zach, when you look back at the uh, last drive, besides the third and one, perhaps, um, what else would you have done differently, you and Brian? Um, you, it's it's tough, you know. It, it is hard. Um, th those are things we'll, we'll continue to review and see if there's anything we should have done differently. Um, you know, certainly when the game doesn't work out in your favor, you're, you're just going to look at the entire game. And I know people focus on the last drive because that's that's how it should be. That's the way it works in those critical moments. Um, but but again, we we just got to continue to learn from it. And um, we've been a great two minute team over the course of the season, you know. And um, it's just unfortunate that that as a team we couldn't get it done there at the end of the game. Jay Morrison. Uh, hi, Zach. Congratulations. Um, I was wondering if you could kind of characterize what, <clears throat> excuse me, what that meeting with Mike was like. Was it was it football recap first, then contract, or did he get the contract out of the way right away <laughs> Tuesday morning? How, how, what was that meeting like when he got back? You know, like like we always do. You know, we we talk about um, a lot of different things, and and. Uh, I think that's what's special about the relationship that we all have in the building. Um, myself, Duke, and and Mike and the entire family um, is that this isn't a once a month thing where you have to cover all these range of topics that that haven't been covered in 30 days or, or three months. Um, it, it's an ongoing. We, we met at the Super Bowl, you know, several times to make sure we were all on the same page with a lot of things, and um, you know, and that's that's uh, the way that that. I like it. That's the way they like it. Um, I think it's worked really well for us to help us get to this point. And, and that relationship will continue that way. Thanks. Ben Baby. Yeah, Zach, I think, you know, we, we talked about this throughout the season, but, you know, given the situation you were in, a lot of guys, you know, wouldn't have been able to, to you know, be as successful as y'all were, much less go to the Super Bowl. Why do you think you were able to handle the pressure of, of what was you, you were under in that third year uh, to enable for y'all to, to be as successful as y'all were this season? Uh, first of all, I think you're, you're, um, every year you have to have that, that same urgency. And so I, I know a lot's made of, of going into the season, but for us, um, that doesn't change our process at all. Uh, but, but I think what allows you to endure that and feel confident in it is the relationships. And, and that's, that's what I believe we've built with the players. Um, we built with the coaches and, and crossing those, those, uh, avenues there, you know, with the players and the coaches. And so I think there's just a lot of trust in the building that we have the right people. Um, every week's a new week, a new animal, every opponent, but, but uh, we have trust in each other, respect in each other. Um, the commun communication has been good enough to where we know we're always on the same page and um, it's not always going to be easy. Obviously there's going to be challenges, but um, we've got the right people and the right, right, right relationships to get us through it. Dave Lapham. Yes, sir, Coach. Uh, when you sign a five-year contract extension, I'm sure there have been there were conversations, you know, uh, ongoing for for quite a while. You have a representative in the in the Bengals, obviously, uh, you know, dealing there. I know it was not on your plate with everything else that was going on. When did you feel like, or when when did you have an understanding that you might be able to uh, consummate that extension? Um, it, it all took place yesterday. You know, and it's that's just that's just between uh, me and me and Mike and the family. Um, it, it didn't take long. We're on the same page. Uh, I, I have a tremendous amount of appreciation for the opportunity that I've been given here. And who knows if I hadn't been hired by the Bengals, would I ever be a head coach? I have no idea. You know, and so I'll always be appreciative of the opportunity that that Mike and the family gave me. Um, I'm happy here. Uh, my family loves it here. I love coming into the building every day. I love everybody I interact with. So it's not a difficult decision to to move forward on something when when everyone's on the same page that way. Fox Miller, coach. Uh, typically in the off season, uh, some coaches come and go onto new teams, new opportunities. Talk about this group of coaches and and a special moment maybe that you guys shared after the game. Well. Um, you know, I, I just think we've we've shared a lot of special moments. You know, after those wins, um, you know, we 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 like to take a picture, kind of to, to memorialize the moment there in the locker room. Um, it's we've done it at home, obviously after the Raiders game, but but 
in the visiting locker rooms is usually the most fun in my experience over the years. Those, those are fun times. And, um, so it, it's just, it's a really good group and, and it doesn't need to be about one moment necessarily. You know, it's, it's about the cumulative approach the entire season, um, all the work that's been put in and, and uh, just, just really appreciative of those guys for the work that they've done. Kelsey Conway. Hey, Zach, I know we'll be able to talk more with you and Duke about it at the combine, but um, how confident in you, in, um, you, in your ability as the Bengals organization, do you guys feel like you will be able to get a contract extension done with Jesse Bates? And how happy were you to see him have the postseason he did after you know all that he went through this year and what he said about how this was a challenging season for him? Jesse, Jesse's uh, approach has been tremendous all year. Really been proud of him. Um, he's a big part of what we do. Um, we're really proud of, of how he's led this team and um, how he played for us, you know, really over the last four years. And, and again, those are conversations that will always be ongoing. Um, I think everyone knows that we want just to be a part of this and, and, and we'll just continue to work through those, those discussions. Gail Noy. Hey, Zach, uh, curious, now that you've decided to, or that you've agreed to stay in Cincinnati, you know, several years longer. What is, looking back to when you were hired, what's the main primary, what's one thing you learned about Cincinnati or about this organization that maybe you had no idea about going into this job? I think one of my draws to this was was understanding what Cincinnati is about, you know, and, and uh, it's rare that you get a preview of that, you know, like I did a couple of years before I, I moved back here. And so that was part of the draw was knowing the passion of the city um, how much they love their sports teams and, and, and just the pride that they have overall in the city. It, it's a special place. I think everyone who's actually visited here understands that. Um, you know, I, I think most people who are from Cincinnati understand what I say when I say people are surprised. They come to Cincinnati and they spend three days and they're surprised um, because it, it's a little bit of a secret, you know, for those that aren't from Ohio or from the Cincinnati area. Um, and, it, and it's, it's, it's all our secret, you know, and, and, but people who have come here and spent just a matter of days really come to appreciate it and understand, um, why people grow up here, why people stay here, why people move away to Chicago or some other college. And then they come back like about everybody I meet seems to do that. Um, and it's why my family wanted to come back, you know, after living here for nine months. And so, um, again, it's just a tremendous place to, uh, to live, to raise a family, um, to be able to socialize and to be able to support, you know, all, all the teams that are here, whether it be at UC, Xavier, all the pro sports teams that we have here in this town. Um, just really, really a cool place. John London, WLWT. Coach, congratulations. I, I don't know that um, in, the, in the decades that I've been in town that I've ever seen the Bengals in a more, in a stronger position and a more beloved position than they are right now. And that's a testament to you and all the, all the, the entire organization, I guess. I'm always curious about this. Um, what, uh, separate from football, what are, what are the needs that you see or are there needs that you see uh, with regard to the stadium, the practice field, anything else? And then secondarily, one of the most popular things out there this year was the delivery of the game balls. And I'm wondering how that came about, and do you intend to continue that in, in the years ahead? The, the first part of the question, we, we've been given everything that we need to succeed. And I think that's a big reason why uh, we were able to make it to the Super Bowl. And, um, you know, the, the, the path to the Super Bowl in the AFC is going to be in some cold weather environments. And we plan, we, we want that to be here in Cincinnati, that, that the path to the Super Bowl goes through here. Uh, but previously, it's it's been through the AFC North, through New England, through Kansas City, through Indy, um, a lot of cold weather cities. And so we take a lot of pride in um, when you mention facilities, uh, being a very tough team that, that doesn't complain about being out in the elements. Uh, we're prepared for it. Um, and I think it served us really well this year. Uh, we all know that everyone that attended the games, it could have been colder than it was. Uh, we were probably fortunate in that regard. But um, our, our team was ready for anything. And, and uh, I'm very proud of that fact. And I know that they are, too. Um, the game ball thing will continue forever. Uh, that's the plan. Um, it's, it's, I think it's, it's a cool way to incorporate the city. Um, I didn't anticipate it, uh, becoming, uh, what it has become. I, I'm, I'm happy that it has certainly, because I think that there's a lot of pride 
um, in the city with these game balls and, and everyone feels like they're a part of it. That was the initial uh, reason for it. Um, it. It's really blossomed, but I think it's a neat thing uh, that we get a chance to, the players and the coaches get a chance to be a part of and interact with the community in those rare moments during the season that we don't actually get to really engage with people that way. Um, so that part's been special, uh, but that's certainly something that we continue to, to um, build upon in years to come. Jasmine Stiles, WCPO. Hi there, Coach Taylor. Congratulations on the extension. I'm Jasmine Stiles here from WCPO. Um, saw some analysts uh, kind of comparing uh, Joe's season to, or Joe's trajectory rather, to Andrew Luck and just the amount of sacks he's gotten. What is the team and the organization doing to protect, uh, you know, now the nickname Joey franchise and making sure that he remains healthy and a long-term uh, player with the organization? Yeah, we'll continue to, to find ways to, to build our team in the years to come, you know, and um, again, we, we've got a taste of the Super Bowl. We know it's going to take a lot of hard work to get there. And we're going to continue to work through that, you know, over the course of the offseason, the training camp and next season to, to do everything that we can to get back. Gary Miller. Zach, it, it's not common and it's maybe Cincinnati thing to have the rally they're going to have this afternoon without winning the Super Bowl. What's it mean to you and what's the reaction of the players to know that the city wants to celebrate them one more time? It, it's um, really thankful. You know, to, to just be a part of a fan base that is this passionate about the team, um, felt like they were a part of it. You know, I, I truly believe the fans felt like they were there with us every step of the way. Uh, couldn't have done it without them. Had some tremendous home field advantages um, over the course of the entire season, uh, but particularly late when it, when it really mattered. Uh, really felt like them rise up and, and rise to the occasion and really help us get those wins. And, uh, you know, felt their support in Tennessee, in Kansas City, in Los Angeles. Uh, it's rare to be a part of support like that. And so, again, just very appreciative that, that we're getting these moments that we get a chance to uh, really enjoy with the fans. Dave Lapham. Coach, there's a lot of, <clears throat> a lot of things going into a season of success like you had. You know, great play, great play calling, but then luck and health. Of those two things, which would you rather have more of luck or health? I <laughs> just, I don't need to pick, you know, I think uh, um, it always factors in, you know, a, a ball bounce in a certain way in a game, whether you want to call that luck or whether you want to call it a, a, a opportunity that we created, you know, because we were ready for a moment that, that happened to fall our way. Um, I don't really care how people look at it, uh, but the health is important, you know, and, and I think that that's, that's twofold. That's, um, a great job by our players understanding how to manage their their bodies and and make sure that they're ready for a 21 game season, longest in NFL history, and uh, our our strength staff, you know, and that's Joey Bose and Todd and Garrett, and the work that they do with these players. I think the players have come to really have a tremendous amount of respect for those guys um, with the sports science way that we do things, uh, with what they do there in the in the weight room. Um, the way that we practice, which is a collaborative effort, you know, through our players, our coaches, and Joey and his staff, and in our our uh, training room. And so, I just think that that all goes hand in hand, Dave. And, and you all know, it's um, oftentimes that the healthier teams are the ones that have the opportunity to make the run. You got to take advantage of it and make the plays. And I felt like we did that, and our guys were were as healthy as as we can relatively be um, there towards the end. We have time for a few more. Uh, we'll go to Caleb Noe. Caleb. Hey, Zach, there's been, a, there's been a lot made about how active you all have been and, and were last year specifically in free agency. And, and obviously the draft has been important with free goal too. But uh, for the free agent world specifically, why is it so important to win in, in the free agent aspect of things in that world? Well, I, I think you certainly want to... Um... Money is attractive to players, first of all. Um, number two, you, you want that combined with a place that they feel like they can win games and, and be a part of, of a place where they, they enjoy coming to work every single day. And I think that, that people have seen that from afar, um, from our own players' actions, from how we've played on the field. Um, and, and they see that this is a team that has a really solid foundation that's built for the future. I anticipate players wanting to be a part of that. Every year is going to be different in terms of what our needs are and what our approach is through the draft and free agency. Um, you know, there, there's certainly some players on our own team that are up that, that we, we want to be a big part of our future as well. 
And, and again, those conversations will be ongoing here over the next couple of weeks. Brandon, say ho. Hey, Zach. First off, congrats on the extension. Uh, Thanks, well, well deserved. Um, Jack, kind of following up with what Caleb said, uh, have you felt the Joe Burrow effect of players wanting to come here? Like, I don't know if you heard what Rob Gronkowski said a couple of weeks ago about if Tom Brady's not playing, he'd want to play with Joe Burrow. Like, is that, I know winning and getting to the Super Bowl is a big deal, but do you feel that Joe Burrow effect of players wanting to play with him? I think that's true. I, I think that uh, people have watched how he's gone about his business in just a, a short amount of time, responding from an energy, being the comeback player of the year, um, helping a team get to a Super Bowl. Um, what am I missing? You know, if, if uh, I think everybody sees the same thing, everyone who's on the Zoom, uh, our coaching staff, our players, people around the league, uh, they have a tremendous amount of respect for uh, the job that he's done and, and the way he's gone about it. And, and that's certainly um, a big draw for us. Mike Petraglia, Mike. Zach, um, you talked throughout the year about building the culture, building uh, the organization the right way, building the locker room the right way. I'm wondering how much of making the Super Bowl kind of continues that message for you as you try to bring in free agents or try to you know, bring in the right draft picks, how big of a deal that is? Winning always helps. And uh, again, I, I think that the, the players who signed on to be a part of this last year felt that. Uh, they felt that from our own players the ones they had relationships with. Um, I, I, I think that even despite a lot of the losses we had, people could see a team that was was fighting and was very close and, and wanted to be a part of, of that and turning it around. And you look at players in our own division, Larry, Mike Hilton, um, that would have seen that firsthand, that they jumped on board, you know, and they had plenty of opportunities elsewhere. Um, and they, they chose to come to Cincinnati. And so I, I certainly think that um, they're good examples of, of outsiders that saw what we were building here, wanted to be a part of it, uh, believed in what we were doing, and they helped us, you know, kind of get over that hump to where we got this year. And and I think that other people will see that as well. Jay Morrison. Yeah, Zach, I wanted to get a quick clarification before I have my first, my second question. Um, the game ball thing, is that going to be playoff games only or regular season games? Playoff games only. Playoff games only, okay. And then I was wondering, you, you mentioned – Last week about how you never really had time to process the the loss to the Patriots three years ago. Uh, I'm wondering if 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 that process of the processing is still ongoing right now, or if if it is, you feel like you've done everything you need to do to kind of get beyond Sunday's loss. Uh, no, <laughs> no. Uh, I you know um, it, it's one of those things you, you think you're beyond it, and then and then a moment comes back to you and and uh, it becomes fresh again. But um, I know over time, you know, we're, we're going to have an opportunity. It, it really is the craziest thing, you know, as, as soon as the game ended, um, I just wanted to sit down and, and just kind of shut my brain off for, for weeks. Uh, but after a day, um, all you want to do is get back to work and, and try to get back to that stage. And so uh, that's the best way I can answer the question, Jay, is it just it makes you want to get back there even more than you ever thought. Um, I always knew that I wanted to go coach again for another Super Bowl and win a Super Bowl. Uh, but once you actually get there, um, and, and it goes the way it did, um, it's just an immediate uh, fire that burns even even stronger than it did before to, to do everything that we got to do to try to get back. Thanks. Last question from Keenan Singleton. Keenan. Zach, I know you spoke with, uh, <clears throat> um, I know you spoke with Sean McVay in the days after uh, the Super Bowl and up leading up to the Super Bowl, Sean said that, um, you know, he took a lot of that first loss and he internalized it and he tried to improve upon himself and the team. What do you think will be the main, I guess, moving forward piece that you take from it? And will you speak with other coaches that have lost Super Bowls and, and try to formulate a new plan going forward? Uh, yeah, I think it'd be, it'd be foolish to me not to, not to try to gather the information I can as best we can on, on how people have responded and, um, certainly, you got to have a feel for your own team and your own organization and how we're going to do it. Not, not no two teams are ever the same, um, but but of course, so over the course of this off season, you know, um, try to find different ways that that people have um, regrouped and, and gone about things. Obviously, our off season changes; it's different. We played six weeks longer uh, than other teams did. You know, a lot of other teams, and so um, you know, our players deserve some time of recovery and 
and some time with their family and, and some time to themselves. So um, you got to regroup and, and approach the offseason, um, you know, maybe with some tweaks that we have in the past. But, uh, you know, I, I think it's just it'll be part of our own process. And, and uh, I think that we'll have a good plan in place to do everything we can to rebound and give ourselves another opportunity to be successful. Thanks. All right, Coach, we kept you for a while. We appreciate yeah, you know, your time. I, Thanks. I, I, did, I did forget a couple people, you know, in the video department. Um, you know, Travis and, and Kent and Brooks, they do a tremendous job. And, and, and I, I wanted to make sure I mentioned them. And uh, Marissa and Dan and, and Dave and, um, you know, and that whole crew and, and Hobson, everybody upstairs as well. So, um, again, everybody's been a part of this thing. And, and appreciate you all as well. You know, you guys have, have – uh, always treated us very fairly over the course of the season and i um, happy that you all got to be a part of this ride as well. And, and uh, on to next year. Thank you all. Great coach. Thanks.